Agar Limited, the parent company of the brand, was born in 2018. I founded the company after many years working in Adidas that semi arid land, specifically Isiolo, with an NGO. I realized that we had more, we expressed more impact, and we would have, conditional, with a action as a company, as a private sector, than as an NGO. Not because NGOs are not needed, uh, but most of the time I heard these beneficiaries being specifically bothered and concerned by lack of market. Akuna Soko, Akuna Soko, that's what I kept on hearing. So I was like, okay, let me be the Soko that cannot be really found in these areas. And so I founded Agars to give market linkages to areas that seem not to have any. Um, some private sector was there, but quite inconsistent. That's how Agar was born, okay? Essenza, which is about to be rebranded in Jua, was born to give to give added value, to give value to certain core items from arid lands, specifically myrrh and frankincense. Do we know those two from where? The Bible, right? So very few people know that both of them are actually in Kenya. Wow. In Masabit, in Turkana, in Wajia, in Samburu. Look, to be honest, I have to start really deep where we work because the first challenge is the lack of investment, lack of spotlight, lack of security sometimes, and lack of infrastructure that are in the semi-arid lands. We might look all sleek now and uh, looking good and uh, we, are get, we are getting our own shop this year, yeah, but we are still very much grounded in the north of this country. And drought has been ravaging our country right now. So that's the biggest challenge that we have. So for the industry, let me now talk specifically about the, the, the hospitality industry, because now we are heavily invested in that. There could be more attention to the circularity aspect and to the natural aspect, meaning the quality that we express in our product it takes a lot of efforts sure. and money. Sure. I mean, the money is the money that we put in our organic certification is not little, um, it's a lot of money. We, uh, we invest in certifications because we want to do that. But sometimes I talk to clients and say, look, your product is nice and the story of the impact is also good. But at the end of the day, if I don't match my competitor or, or, or if I don't squeeze myself to, to go down, to, it goes down to cost, which I fully understand. But if you ask me what I could change, I would definitely change the, uh, the cost aspect, not to be everything all the time, so that people can enjoy a little bit more uh, the traits of our products, such as circularity, because we recycle, because we, we, we are very um, uh, sustainable and, and, and all of that. Yeah, we, we, we want to expand. I, 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 I like to be ambitious and uh, I always thought that Made in Africa should be a brand. Uh, I mean, Africa clearly is a continent. Uh, we, don't, we have a Made in Europe. Uh, we have a Made in Italy, where I come from. Um, I believe Made in Africa, not to be a generic generalization, but to be a partnership of a few countries that could work together to make certain things. Like for instance, mm -hmm. um, we want to start getting clove bud from Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. We want to start getting citronella from Uganda. Now it's from here. We used to get eucalyptus from Rwanda. Sure. So when I talk about made in Africa, I'm, okay, I'm specifically talking about made in East Africa, yes. But we want to go to Europe with a product that is made here. Sure. That's what I mean. Sure. Too much time, what we see is Western or European or Chinese um, companies that come here for the raw material, they bring it back and they make their products there. What we want to know is to make products here because we can express, as African companies, we can express quality right here. We just need to be more compliant, more um, attentive to processes and, and, and to procedures. But we can, I'm 100% sure that we can. So where I see my brand and other African brands 
is exported just like the made in Italy where I come from became such a good synonym of, of, of quality, right? Made in Italy, you think about quality. I want to have made in Kenya uh, to have the same synonym, to have that same idea. Jua needs definitely to be exported and uh, we want to take Kenyan excellence out of Kenya. Compliance. So it's not easy. Um, so I, I think more than half of Kenya, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's still considered informal sectors. What I keep telling everyone is a bad buyer drives a bad product. And a bad buyer doesn't require certificate of analysis, certificate of origins, uh, phytosanitary, um, movement of permits. He will just want a cheap product to make the most margin possible. A good buyer will ask you for a, value, for a supply chain map, will ask you for circularity, will ask you for certification. I want to be appealing to good buyers. We are ethical certified, organic certified. We are uh, um, a, a member of IFEAR, the Federation of Essential Oil Producers. So we want to show people we are compliant. Uh, to, to get all of this certification, we have to go through a number of assessments. Every assessment looked at how compliant we were, how transparent our processes were, how um, our permits were put together into uh, getting from A to B to C. So all of that is very important and what I can say is in order to be there we need to keep thriving for top compliance. So I think it's a great initiative. Why? Even for a sector where we might be sometime in competition, okay? I believe that there is always a way in which we can cut enough space for us and others in the same market. If, for instance, I produce essential oils and I cannot fulfill a demand, I'm happy to bring business to a good business that does similar things to me. I believe that this initiative can put together uh, sectors players that maybe too often see each other as competitors, but believe me or not, they could just be very much um, partners 